And we'd like to hear about the prosperity that comes. Yeah. We preach the gospel. Amen. But I know that it can be a lonely road. Yeah. Amen. When the wicked is on your back, when you preach the gospel. And the old apostles, many of them, they were beheaded for the preaching of the gospel. Yes. So when you see the ground, be careful because if you enter into ministry, you will find your head in the capital. That's right. Amen. I'm saying all of that to tell you that God called him from a young age. Amen. And when he was born in King Solid Hospital, my wife, Vesta, lifted him up in the hospital ward and gave him to God. Amen. The Sonata said too many dangers. Toil and snare. Praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man who hears from God. We know that. And we have seen him as an intercessor in our family. Now I shall just be there standing in the seat.
there's only a reason why he would tell us to do certain things. He makes no mistakes. Amen. Glory. I thank the Lord that I made today. Amen. I'm very grateful. I'm very humble to be in your presence. Amen. God has been so good to me. God has been so great. Amen. I would like to greet all of the visiting ministers, evangelists. I would like to greet Bishop Brissett, Sister Brissett, Deacon's elders. Thank you very much for having me here today. As my father said, the Lord called me at a very young age. And I've lived a life that many people find very difficult to understand. God has carried me through peaks and through troughs, as they say. And I have encountered so many experiences that sometimes I pinch myself. I wonder.
the trip to Jerusalem. Many people in the crowd along the world believed that he was going to Jerusalem to establish his earthly kingdom immediately. Of course, he was going to Jerusalem to die. As he had stated in Luke 18, 33, Jesus used this parable to dispel any hopeful rumours that the time of the kingdom had arrived. In the parable, a nobleman leaves for a foreign country in order to be made king. Before he left, he gave ten minutes to his ten servants. A minute was about a good sum of money equal to three months' wages. And a future king said, put this money to work until I come back. Occupy thyself. In the Greek, we have the word pragmatus sasta. This is the specific word which the master used. It comes from the word pragma. The core word is pragmatism, for which the definition is thinking or dealing with problems in a practical way. We live in a world where people are happy to talk about Christ Jesus, provided we restrict our conversation only to talk about his love. The love of Christ is a topic which does not seem to offend the average person. The average person will sit down and discuss how Christ loves us all day long. Of course, there is time to talk about the love of God, because God's everlasting love abounds and is great. But, when it comes to talking about the judgment of Christ and hearing that one day our Lord and Saviour will return to us as a master and a judge, no one really has any interest to talk about that. I heard a story some many years ago of a young man who had just graduated from Bible seminary. Full of enthusiasm, he was invited to preach at a local church. Several of the members were highly offended at his sermon because the topic that he chose to preach was Christ's judgment and the punishment of hell. <coughs> they had clearly lost sight of the fact that it's because God loves us that one day he will have to judge us. 
Jesus says in John 4, verse 3, If I go, one day I will return. Yes, yes. In the parable of ten minutes, the servants knew that they had a duty. They also knew what their duty was. The master made it very clear that they should do business till I come. So no one had any excuse to do anything else but to work until the master returns. That's right. Because when Jesus returns to establish his kingdom, one of the first things he will do is to utterly defeat his enemies. We see this in Revelation 19, verses 11 to 15. It does not pay to fight against the King of Kings. That's right. In this society, men do not wish to be held accountable for their actions. They want to do everything to please themselves. That's right. I can offend anyone. I don't need to take any responsibility. Mm -hmm. I can say anything I want to say. And I should not be held accountable for it. I can say anything that I want to say. In this passage, we see that the man's subjects hated him and sent word to him that they refused to acknowledge his kingship. Mm -hmm. We have this in um, verse 14. When the man was crowned king, he returned to his homeland and began to set things right. The first thing that he did was he called the ten servants mm -hmm. whom he had loaned the minutes. Mm -hmm. They each gave an account of how they had used the money. The first servant showed that his mina had earned ten more. The king was pleased. Well done, he said, good and faithful servant. Because you have been trustworthy mm -hmm. in a small matter, take charge yeah. of ten cities. That's right. The next servant's investment had yielded five, five additional minutes. Yes. And that servant was rewarded with charge of five cities. Wow. <clears throat> then came a servant who reported that he had done nothing <laughs> with his minute except to hide it in a cloth. <laughs> you imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> when challenged, his reason was, I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and we, what you did not sow. Oh my. <laughs> the king responded to the servant's description of him as hard by showing hardness, calling him a wicked and servant, yes. and commanded for his minna to be given to someone who had earned 10. 
That's right. Some bystanders said, Sir, he already has ten. And the king replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given, but as for the one who has nothing, even what they have oh my. will be taken my Lord, away. My Lord, my Lord, Lord. Jesus' my Lord. most basic point is that the kingdom was not going to appear immediately. There would be a period during which the king would be absent before the kingdom would be set up. The power of ten minutes is like the power of the talents. In Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30, some people often assume that they are the same power, but there are enough differences to warrant a distinction. The parable of the minutes was told on the road between Jericho and Jerusalem. The parable of the talents was told later at the Mount of Olives. The audience for the parable of the minutes was a large crowd. The audience for the parable of the tablets, sorry, of the talents, was the this disciples themselves. The parable of the minutes deals with two classes of people, servants and enemies. The parable of the talents deals with only professed servants. The nobleman in this parable is Jesus who left this world but who will return as a king someday. The servants of the king charges with a task to represent followers of Jesus. The Lord has given us a valuable commission. We must be faithful to serve him until he returns. Upon his return, Jesus will ascertain the faithfulness of his own people. We see in Romans 14 verses 10 to 12, there is work to be done. John 9 verse 4, and we must use what God has given us for his glory. There are promised rewards for those who are faithful in their charge. Sadly, we live in a world where many of us say, <coughs> if the world does not accept my feelings, I will not comply. I will not comply with religious norms. I will not go to church on Sunday. I will not conduct myself in a way in which the Bible has instructed me to behave. I will not pray. I will not read the Bible. In many cases, I won't even come to church. Scripture tells us that the Master returned to judge his servants. Even the servants 
who had hard hearts. Revelation 2 verses, verse 27 says that when God returns, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. The servants knew that he would return home because he told them he did not trick them into believing that he would never return. They knew that when he returned home, that they would be held accountable for what they had done with the menace. They knew that he was a harsh master. They knew that he would punish or reward them for their actions. They knew that they had a job to do. Acts 17 says, For he has set a day when he would judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Not everyone is going to heaven. I often get puzzled when I see how many people who profess to be believers of Christ conduct themselves. It is almost as if we have a right of passage into heaven. I genuinely believe that many of us just assume that the doors of heaven will just swing open for us. Many of us believe that we can live any life. Many of us believe that we can do anything. We forget that there's an all-watching eye yes. that sees everything, every hidden thing, every secret thing, those things which no one else knows. There is an all-watching eye who is keeping a record of our conduct. The servants knew that he would return home because he told them. But in spite of that, there was a particular servant who had made a decision to bury his ring in a piece of cloth. Jesus said